My name is Kiernan Miller, and I'm here speaking with Tamika Buckhalter. Do I have your permission to record this interview, Ms. Buckhalter? Yes. Can you please spell your name as you would like it to appear on this project? Tamika, T-A-M-I-K-A, Buckhalter, B-U-C-K-H-A-U-L-T-E-R. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about yourself and what makes you unique. Um, I grew up in the um, in Jackson. I still stay in Jackson. Um, same neighborhood, actually, that I grew up in. Still stay there in Georgetown community. Um, and I think that's pretty. Grandma still well. My grandma had passed, but my mom and dad now stays in her house. So same house my dad grew up in. Can you so, describe the neighborhood that you grew up in? Um, it was fun. Kids um played. Um, we all had a one lady in the neighborhood that took everybody in, and everybody she bought games and. Everything we all played. Um, she took us to Bible school every every day. Um, it was fun. We had fun. Tell me about who raised you and how they raised you. Um, my mom and my dad, which is both still living and together. Um, it was fun. We was just like the normal. Kids, we went outside and played and everything. They they raised all of us, me and my sisters and my brother, all together in the same little neighborhood. How many siblings do you have? I have two sisters and two brothers. Okay. Who are you closer with of um, your siblings? My sisters and my younger brother. We all are very, very close. What makes those relationships different or special to you? Because we still do everything together. It's like everywhere we go and stuff, we all together. We always together. Except for my, my younger brother, where he moved to Atlanta, but we try to go up there as much as possible to visit him. So that's always fun because all of us are always all together. What kind of stuff would you all do as a family? Um, We go... We all go to my mom's house all the time. So we always there, um, especially on Saturdays, we all meet up there and we just look at TV, sit on the porch, just hang out together. We still do. We go out to eat, we go together. We go on trips, we go together. It's, it's always uh, all of us. What would a typical day look like as a child growing up in? Central Jackson. What was a typical day look like for you? Um, it was getting up. I always wanted to go outside to go to the the lady. Her name was Miss Ruth. To go to Miss Ruth's house to play, cause she had all the games, all the puzzles. But I did like going to Sunday school too. So with her, she took everybody in the neighborhood. She took all the kids. She let us play. She took us to. Vacation Bible school, she took us to church, she took, she just, it was fun. Could you share some memories or stories from your childhood that stand out above others? Mm. The fact that all of us are still, even the kids that we play with in the neighborhood, we still keep in contact and still see each other when we can and stuff. We can be sitting on the porch at my mom's house now and some of them pass by and stop the talk. So that's still. So you pretty much built lifelong yes, relationships. Yes, with all of them. Okay. Tell me about your experience of becoming a parent. Um, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. Um, have Three kids, um, only one girl though, and it's it's challenging, but it's fun. <laughs> During your
pregnancy? Were there any challenges that you faced? How did you feel at that time, knowing that you were about to be become a mother? Um, with my first son, I was young, so I was still a teenager, so that was kind of, so he probably more, we stayed with my mom, so he always was a grandma baby because I was always, I was young. She still didn't stop me from going, I mean, he still didn't stop me from going anywhere. Like, my mom still say, go ahead and go, because I was still in high school. So she still let me go to the games and everything that I wanted to go, and I didn't have to take him if I didn't want to. Okay. Most of the time I did, anyway. Just took him, anyway. So were you excited about becoming a parent, even though you were still in high school? Yeah. I was excited, scared, but excited. What were you scared of? Um, I guess because I was just young. That's what, it was new. Mm -hmm. Just everything. What helped you overcome being fearful of motherhood? My family. My mom, my sisters. Um, my mom, my sister, my dad. Just, they was there. So, that got me through it. Okay. If you're raising children now, describe what a typical day looks like raising children now. Mm. So I remember you said you have three children. Mm -hmm. Are they all adults? Yes. So that means you have grandchildren. Grandchildren, yes. <laughs> How is that raising Oh, them? Lord. They are very challenging. They all different. They all have different person to keep you busy. In what ways? Oh, I think they wake up ready to play. I want to go outside. I want to go somewhere or something. Um, want candy. Wake up, want stuff that they don't care about breakfast and none of that like we did. They be ready to eat junk food. <laughs> so they all just, I never can keep all of them together. Not all of them at the same time, never. <laughs> and how many grandchildren do you have? Seven now. Seven. Yeah, I'm sure that keeps you busy. Yes. How do you describe your role as a parent um, or a member of the community when it comes to children? Um, everybody want to be at my house for some reason, no matter where neighborhood schools my children go to it's like all they friends want to be in my house for some reason i don't know um so i would take all of me all the time it's always a house full so i guess they just like being over there and that's good what challenges with so many additional children around what challenges do you face to support your family financially a lot because it's limited of everything. Pay, um, they don't give you a lot of assistance when you work, so it's just limited to everything. You just try to make it, just try to buy the food or whatever, and just deal with whatever comes next. That's how. And what other ways do you overcome those financial challenges? Um, besides working, um, that's it, just trying to work, uh, even if I had to do additional jobs, like babysit or hair or anything, to get extra money to make sure we okay, that's what I do. Okay. Tell me about a time when your children were misbehaving. How did you handle that? Ooh. Time out. Um, just tell them they not gonna be able to go outside. They not gonna be able to have company. Take TV, basically. Yeah. What kind of misbehaving did did your children oh. engage in? Want some at the store and can't get it, so they try to throw tantrums. So then they definitely can't get it, and they will be in trouble. How important? is school and being successful academically in your family? Well, I, I, thankfully, all of them have graduated. Um, so they, all of them was very smart. 
um, they went to college, but then worked. So they just started working more than going to school. So hopefully they'll go back to school. Who is your support system with raising your grandchildren? Um, and can you describe what support systems look like? Um, well, with one is my daughter, so she has three. Her, between her and me and her dad and their dad, and they, they work, it just work out. But the other one is um, my son, he has four. So the kid's mother, all about the same person. So she do wonderful with them. So she kind of handles it on her own unless she need me. But he helps him and her do wonderful with them unless he need the help. Okay. So I heard you say that your son and his girlfriend or Mm -hmm. children's mother's children, children's mother, mm -hmm. co-parent. Yes. What are some good indicators of good co-parenting? Um, they keep them in in extracurricular stuff, I'm guessing, for they keep them busy. Um, they make a day where they go places. Even if they're at home, they do movie night or take them outside just to go across the street to the park, anything. They keep them busy. You have to. It's four of them. <laughs> how do you compare the way you were raised versus how children or even your grandchildren are raised today? I think it's similar because how they've so? got both parents. They have other family, they grandmama, they great-grandmama and aunts and uncle that they all can, you know, help out with them. So I think it's similar. What are some differences in how you were raised versus even your own children or your grandchildren? Um, the difference we didn't, I guess, ask for a lot. They require a lot. And these kids these days are expensive. I guess they see they you know, they um, classmates or whatever with stuff, then they want it, then you have to try to get it for them because they do good at school, so you try to get it for them, but I think that's the difference. We didn't want a lot like they do. So they cost a lot. Yes, <laughs> they cost a whole lot. What lessons about money have you passed down to your children and your grandchildren? To try to save as much as possible. You got to save as much as possible because one day you might not have it. How would you describe your parenting style? Are you um, a gentle parent, or do you adopt mm -hmm. a more traditional style of parenting? I think mm, gentle. I don't do a lot of, I guess, discipline. Like, mm -hmm. not really. <laughs> so what does that look like? What does gentle parenting look like um, in your household? I don't do a lot of whoopings. I give a lot of chances. I try to think about when I was growing up, I didn't get a lot of whoopings either. So I try not to just be hard on them. Try to give them more, just as long as they tell me and try to work with them. So in what other ways has parenting changed since you were young? A lot. I think they let the kids now get away with a whole lot that we didn't get away with. They do more than we did when we was younger. We was we was trying to go play and stuff. They want to do. They want to be on their phones and iPads and tell them who they talking to, what they doing. But that's the difference. We want to go outside. Do you feel social media has a positive or negative impact on parenting? Whether it be in your own situation or just yes. what you see in the community? Yes, I think it's negative because the kids don't go outside anymore. They don't want to go outside and play. They always want to be in the house, on the phone, on the game, 
or on an iPad or something versus going outside. We went outside and played. So as a parent, how would you balance or combat the screen time and give them that balance? I think they should just do it weekends. Um, through the week, really don't have time. Because after school you have, they got extra curricular activities, other stuff they do. By that time, it's time to really get ready for the next day. So I think just the weekend should be, but. Okay. Can you paint a picture of the neighborhood you live in today? Um, quiet. You don't see a lot of kids outside. Um, not even nobody outside. After 8 o'clock, you don't hear nothing. It's like quiet. Versus when I was the neighborhood I lived in when I was younger, people were still outside. We were still trying to be outside with the street, like, <laughs> on, trying to play. Mm -hmm. But these kids, you don't barely see kids outside. Never. Every now and then, you see a a couple, not that many. How do you feel about this neighborhood that you live in now? Well, I like it because it's quiet and everything. It's just, I would like to see more kids outside. I'm sure they're in the house playing the game or on their phones or something, but you barely see them outside every now and then. Do you think the neighborhood you live in affects your ability to raise the children or your grandchildren? No. Why not? Because actually my grandkids stay in the same neighborhood I stay in. They stay just a little down the street from me. Mm -hmm. And they go outside sometime, but they even in the house. I don't, I don't know. They go outside every now and then to play or go across the street to the park. There's a park across the street in the neighborhood. And they go to the park or just play outside with them, but it's just them. The other kids that stay down the street or whatever, they in the house, so it's just them. What would you say are the greatest challenges you faced with raising your children? Um, financially. Um, having three with jobs that I had, I just wish I could have had a better job to do more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What more would you have liked to have done if you had had the job? Like save more, sport? maybe save money up for like now that they're grown, they could have had, but I had to take care of them and the house and everything, so. Do you feel like being able to give them, say a lump sum of money, after a certain age would have set them up for a better future, possibly? Possibly, maybe school, or they wouldn't have to work to just, you know, have their own money. They would have already had a little money, so they could could have went to school. It wouldn't have been a problem. Okay. So I know financially, what are some other ways that you have adapted to challenges that you've encountered to support your children or your community? Um, It would be the biggest thing because everything else you can work around. So it would still be financial. Yes. If you could paint a picture of your ideal community or environment for raising children, what would that look like? Um, community where the kids at least come outside and play. Mm -hmm. um, all of them play together, different games. Um, the people in the community, community could do stuff with the kids. Um, maybe have a community day or something for them to do on the weekends mm -hmm. where they would want to be at home and playing instead of in the house, on the phone, a game, or in the street. So. so what kind of extracurricular activities did your children participate in? Football. <sighs> drill team, um, they did different camps like summer camps and 
stuff through school, just a lot of different stuff that they they tried to keep them busy. How old were they when they began these activities? Um, elementary. From elementary to middle school, they did different stuff. Then once high school, I guess they thought they were too big for all that. <laughs> what did they consider having fun when they were in high school? How did they spend their free time? Um, at home with a house full of friends. <laughs> My house was always everybody there. Um, basically, it's still on their phones or talking to each other or looking at TV or they'll sit outside but just be outside with their friends. I always had a lot of people there. As teenagers, how do you deal with them necessarily not doing what you would want them to do? Um, or going down the wrong path? How, how do you deal with that? Um, obviously, I'm one of the big, try to talk to them, but try to let their dad handle it. Because I wasn't the person that I'm still going to be easy on them, so I let him handle it when I know they shouldn't, but I don't know. <laughs> so do you and their father live together? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it's a two-parent household? Yes. What do you think is the, would have been a difference in raising the children had their father not been present in the home? Um, they probably would have did more. Or, yeah, they probably would have did more getting in trouble more, probably. But because he there, they was kind of a little scared, so they didn't, they didn't do too much. How would you describe his role as a parent, um, the father's role? He easy on them. He give them what they, he try to give them what they want to until he know they're doing wrong. And he'll step in. Well, he'll tell me, let me see if what I'm going to do, then he'll step in. Okay. What are your hopes for your children? That they can get a good job where they can save for their kids and where their kids will be older, where they can not have to, you know, just work all the time. They can at least go to school and not work because they have a little money save where they could go to school and be okay. Do you think going into college versus straight to the workforce, do you think there's a difference? Yes, I think they should experience going to college and going to college instead of just going straight to working. Then mm -hmm. they get tired as they get, get older and not want to really work. So yes, it's a difference. What other benefits do you think going to college versus straight to work would have for your children? They always have a degree they can fall back on versus if what they do, whatever they work and doing don't work out for them. So it's like a, a good backup. Backup, yes, yes. How do you predict that parents or caretakers will be raising children for generations to come? Ooh. I think it's gonna get harder. It's gonna get harder because of, like I said, the phones and the iPads and stuff, kids don't really play no more. So it's gonna get harder to parent because that's all they wanna do. What advice would you give to those parents? To try to let them go outside more, take the phone, maybe for just on the weekends or the game or the iPad on the weekends only, and let them go outside and be kids and play with other kids and do stuff with them, a lot with them. As a family, what is some of the most memorable activities that you all have done as a family? Um, I always like when we go on trips, so, and we always go on. So I was asking you about your me most memorable times, and you stated that it was family trips. What yeah. about the family trips stood out? Um, because we're all together. The, me, my siblings, my mom, my 
um, grandkids, nieces, nephews, everybody's together. It's like, and we try to do that. We was trying to do it like once a month since my brother stay in Atlanta. Either he'll come here or we'll go there. Um, but even if we don't, it'd be like me and my sisters and my nieces, nephew, and my kids and stuff still, and my mom will still do something. Even if it's at home, and all us just meet at some one of our houses. We do that. Sounds like good times. Yeah. What about holidays? What's your favorite holiday to get together with all of your family? What kind of activities do you all do? Um, I think Christmas maybe because I, for Christmas, it's all of us in my mom's house. We cook, we listen to music, we just, all, I guess, just by all of us being together. Even um, my aunts and stuff will come then, so everybody is there. What kind of traditions did your mom pass down to you and your siblings? Um, to always be together. Like, by her being a um, family person, it make us, you know, was very close and always together, always doing stuff together. It's just me, my sisters, and my mom mostly, and my, my daughter, my sister's daughter. And I us just go out to eat some, most of the time, every weekend or something. We do something, it's just all of us. What traditions are you and your husband passing down to your children and grandchildren? Um, the same, to always be together and stick together. So, like their first cousins, they always together now, and they say they sisters and brothers, but they actually for cousins. But um, to have that bond like we had. If you could leave a message for your great, 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 great grandchildren about life and anything in general, what would that message be? I think to always stick together and make sure they make time for each other, to make sure they stay close. So being a unit yes. in the family yes. is, is really important. important. Right? Yes, uh, yes. Being together as family, yes. Okay. In what ways do you think sharing your own stories and ideas will benefit your children for generations to come? I think if um, they know and they, we stick together like we do now, they'll keep passing it on to, from, from their family to the next, to the next, to the next. So they'll always be a family. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to add that I didn't ask about? No, ma'am. Do you have any regrets or anything that you wish you could have done differently with parenting? Um, I wish I could have disciplined more. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I think if I would have disciplined more, maybe they would have went to college right off from high school and then went to uh, working instead of just started working and hanging out with friends and different different stuff. I think if I could have disciplined more, I think that was it. Did you ever have aspirations to go to college? Yes. I wanted to go, but I waited a long time before I did go. I always wanted to be a teacher since I was younger. I always have worked in like daycares as teachers or whatever, but not an actual teacher. Yes. Do you think it's possible that you may go to school in the future? Yes. Yes. I want to, yes. What school would you attend? Um, probably Hines, then Jackson State maybe. Would it be for education still? Yes, still would be for education, elementary education. Look, I want to do the younger kids. <laughs> do you think there's a difference in 
dealing with the younger kids versus the older ones? Yes, because once they're older, I think they don't listen as much as the younger ones about them being small and you really, they just starting, which when they older, they already kind of sick, they ain't go. What do you think will help combat the older kids um, getting in trouble or not doing what they're supposed to do in school? What, what, if you had an opportunity to come up with something to give them an opportunity for better, what would that look like? I think uh, if you talk to them more and listen to them sometime and not just fuss all the time, and I think that helps them out a whole lot and they'll tell you more if you just talk to them sometime and listen to them sometime. What other needs within the community do you recognize? And um, who, who's, who are the people that are in the most need? Uh, the kids, because they're the grown-ups is just, they don't, they don't just parent, I guess, no more. They just let them do whatever, do whatever. Now, we didn't have that. Like I said, we had someone in the neighborhood that got all the kids and did stuff with them, took them to church, um, played all the time. I mean, had all kind of games. She had no kids at her house, but she had all the games. Every child in the neighborhood was at her house. And we didn't fight, we didn't argue, we played. But these kids, they don't do that now. What do you think would help fill that void? Maybe if the parents could get together with the neighbors and the people in the community and, and do something with the kids, but they don't, they don't. What role would you play in getting a community to come together for the children? Um, I would like that, but like I said, you barely see the kids, and or if you do, they, I don't know, they just, I guess they be in their own little groups of, have their own friends. They not friends with everybody, just certain people, so. If you could come up with activities for them to do, what would they be? Um, they like to swim, so maybe, like, get them a water, I ain't saying no pool, <laughs> look, water slide or something, or do little games for them, or have a movie night for them, maybe outside or something, where they'll come in somewhere. Something that they'll like to do, and they'll come to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is it. That is all of our time. I appreciate you taking the time out to complete this interview. Thank you.